The reality is, Alicia, that across the military branches, this is the norm. The demographic with the skill sets to function as IT specialists, cyber specialists, even systems administrators, are the youngest members of the military. That's what my sources tell me across the military services. So it's really not a question of, hey, we need older people to do this who we trust more, but rather we need to figure out, we meaning the Defense Department, how to better lock down our information and classified data, even from those who have what are called administrative privileges because they administer the, the network, the program, the database. That is why uh, Jack Tahera had this kind of access. And look, the reality here that everyone needs to know is that many U.S. corporations have better internal security for their most trust, their most uh, sensitive data than the Pentagon has. That disparity should not exist. We've got to get better at locking classified information down. Wait, we are wait, now wait, a wait, decade. But Frank, you know, I'm sorry. You know, I never ahead. interrupt you. You're right. Everyone should know that. How is that possible? How is it possible that you have private companies in this country that have better security for their precious documents than our own government? It's, it's really inexcusable, but I consult with these major global corporations, and I can tell you their insider threat programs, their ability to identify what matters most, the bottom line, what cannot walk out the door because it represents billions in research and development and future market value, they've got it. And they understand how to tag it in their networks, how to identify the employees who should and should not have access, and most importantly, how the alarm bells should go off and do go off when people try to access information they can't see. And when they egress data through printing or spending too much time on the screen reading, which is exactly what Jack Tahera did. And yes, it's the people will say in the defense part, well, you know, he was a systems administrator, he was an IT guy, he had to have access. There's better ways to do this. And one of it is to encrypt the top secret data so that even when a systems administrator pulls it up on the screen, all he or she sees is gobbledygook. It's encrypted, right? Or isolate and narrow the scope of responsibility for each IT specialist so that, hey, you only administer this part of the system, but not that part of the system. The bells and whistles aren't there. The warning signs are not there. It's not locked down. And the ability to find your data out in the wild, which even companies do, by the way, they scour the internet to see if anybody's talking about them and their data. The Pentagon needs to do that as well. What are, what are your questions around motive here, Frank? Well, the best picture into motive uh, was a great interview conducted by the Washington Post of a buddy of Tahera's in this Discord chat room, right? This gaming chat room where young people hang out and talk about everything, especially gaming. And what did his buddy say? No, no, he's not a whistleblower. No, he was showing off. No, it was about telling us and teaching us and showing what he could do. It wasn't about whistleblowing. So that, you know, we're, we're looking at a digital age generation that grew up gaming online, trusting people in their private chat rooms that they've never met and trying to seek affirmation in this group of people out there wanting to be liked, right? So what's the best way to be liked? Look what I have. Look what I have access to. Let me teach you a few things. That's the motivation here. Before you go, and I've only got about a minute left, I got to ask you about Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene defending the accused leaker, not the only right wing figure to do so. I mean, how does that actually make national security more complicated when you have members of Congress egging this guy on? Yeah, Marjorie Taylor Greene sits on the Homeland Security Committee, for heaven's sakes. And, and yes, Tucker Carlson's weighed in as well. They're calling him not a traitor, but some kind of hero. And, and what this does is it makes that kind of pressure, that kind of influence, makes it so difficult for Congress to actually give DOD what it needs, which is more money and budget resources and personnel to get it right and to fix the problem. You can't do that if Congress seems unwilling to see this guy as anything but a traitor. And don't forget, coming down the pipeline, their friend, former President Trump, may be facing these very same charges for the Mar-a-Lago documents. So it's almost mandatory for them to side with this traitor because their friend, Trump, may be looking at these very same charges soon.